right, you're welcome back. Uh, this is the 2019 presidential uh, debate. Uh, you might be safe to say that it would be the last one before the February 16 presidential uh, election. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. You've been uh, listening to the candidates, all six of them, uh, reel out their plans uh, for different sectors of the Nigerian economy and, of course, how uh, the plan to go about uh, those uh, policy, uh, you know, framework that they might have. Now, just to inform you, we did invite the candidate, the presidential candidate of the APC, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, uh, to this debate. As you can see, he's not here. And, of course, the presidential candidate of the PDP, uh, former Vice President al Haji Abubakar Chiku, uh, obviously, he also is not here. But let me go on very quickly uh, to uh, the next questions because uh, we're pressed for time and uh, it's, it's almost as if we have not uh, even looked at you know so many key areas but let me uh, come to you mr uh, kingsley morgalu of the ypp uh, now how are you going to push education reform uh, that's very key uh, in an environment where politically powerful trade unions uh, bear down the throats and neck of, of the federal government. I mean, obviously, you're aware of the ASU strike uh, that has just been conditionally called off. Um, now, how will you, you know, navigate within this kind of environment to uh, ensure that education is where it really should be? Education will be my priority as president. I'm a professor, so I understand very personally the issues involved in the education sector. I will end ASU strikes permanently in this country as president. There will be no ASU strike after I take office because my government will meet with the obligations of the federal government to university and uh, to university teachers. So that's number one. And we will reform education in a manner that addresses the foundational issues of capacity in our universities. The university environment is very weak. Now, we will invest in education by moving the budget from the 5% where it is today to 20% as the first budget of my government. That is number one. Number two, we will invest in teacher training to make sure that all our teachers are retrained and recertified. We will reform the curriculum towards skills education, vocational skills, and we will invest in educational infrastructure. That right. is what we're going to do. Thank you very much. That looks like just one minute one there. Minute I'm not sure. Not uh, okay, to the candidate of the Social Democratic Party, please. I guess you have one minute uh, to explain what you will do. Will basic education be your focus, or will you start from the top, like Mr. Kingsley Moello? Let me not talk about what I will do. Let me talk about what I did as governor. We gave teachers tax breaks in Cross River State. We gave them urban allowances that literally doubled their salaries and the rural areas. So we made it attractive for, for, for teachers to teach in the rural areas. We came up with a policy of not having more than 30 students in a classroom for secondary, three arms to a class, six classes, which is 540 students in a school, and not more than 20 in a primary school, six classes, 300 students. You need to have two teachers teaching a course, right, because you have a policy of no one being left behind. But before you go into that, we need to look at our curriculum again. Our curriculum is outdated. The policy of having two teachers, no one being left behind, ensures that the weaker students catch up, especially tutor, because there's nothing like a poor student. You have poor teachers. Now, going further, you must ensure that teacher progression is tied onto student performance. All right, thank you very much. Uh, yes, the time is brief, I understand that, but uh, one minute for you to explain uh, exactly what you will do uh, in terms of education. How much priority would that be? Would basic education uh, be your priority or tertiary? And really, do you really think that uh, it's practical uh, for us to continue to have free education at what level? Well, our constitution guarantees free education for now at least at universal up to secondary. Um, it's, a bit, it's, argu it's an argument about the universities. One minute is not enough for me to talk about the travesty that is universal basic education in this country and how many schools, primary public schools, have been to where nothing gets taught all year. You see the building, you see some students in there, nobody's teaching anybody anything. Empower people who are employed, they don't go to work. And we're manufacturing a mass 
another millions of illiterate. But let me talk about what I'll do with it, tertiary. Every student in this country should begin to practice that what, what they're studying. I mentioned something about the civil engineering students earlier on. The electricity problem of this country will never be solved until students of electrical engineering get involved and begin to perform experiments and we begin to learn from the ground up. Even students of history should be the ones going to the nearest village and collating the history and the languages of our people that is disappearing. This country is an unbuilt country. It is the people and the youth of this country that will build this country. All right, thank you very much to Mr. Falad Rotoy of the Alliance for New Nigeria. Uh, basic education, will that be your priority or tertiary education? And how will you uh, really fund it? And uh, a lot of people are actually curious, how soon really would we begin to see these changes? Well, I can tell you. Well, I can tell you a quick story of something that we did in 2008. And you can see how quickly uh, the lives of students and how quickly education can change. In 2008, um, my organization, Visible Impact, helped uh, 48,150 students in Oyo State to prepare for the NECO exams. At that point in time, or prior to that, Oyo State had always performed at about number 28 in the League of States um, in maths and number 23 in English. We trained those students for 10 days in 22 centers, but we were not just teaching them the techniques of learning how to pass exams, but more importantly, the values, values of what leaders do to be able to, to succeed in life. The good news was that when those students, 48,000 students, were to, were, took the exams in 2009, or your state came number three in English and number four in maths. Why? Because they learned something that helped them for life. Now, this has also been taken by Anambra State. Today, Anambra State is So this leading. is a template you so it's, want it's to something uh, we can use do. We can do this become by driving techniques and okay. values into the curriculum. All right, thank you very students. much. Now to the uh, candidate of the Action Democratic Party, engineer, uh, Yabagi Sani. Um, the same question to you. I mean, basic education or uh, tertiary education. Now, the real question is, how will you navigate through, uh, you know, trying to fix education? with the labor unions breathing down your neck? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, you know, uh, the symbol of our party is book, which means we treasure education more than any other thing. And for the information of the public, we are number 10 on the ballot. So when you go out on the February 16th to vote, please vote for ADP number 10. Education is number one in our priority. What we are going to do, we are going to attract the private sector to come into education maybe do something better than 2% uh, education tax which we pay today and ensure that there's that partnership between the government and the private sector so that we can provide quality education for our people. Maybe we cannot make it free now, but we can declare a kind of an emergency on education because education, if you want to bring down any country to its knees, attack its education system. And that's what I think is happening. That's why some of my colleagues have said here that this government and the success the government before these ones probably have the kind of conspiracy against people of this country. That's why they refuse to fund the education. For instance, this budget of, of this year has only 7%. All right, which thank is less you very than much. Required. Thank you very much. To so the candidate of the African Action Congress, uh, Mr. Shuware. Uh, well, government is cash strapped. It has been saying it cannot really fund uh, tertiary education the way that many Nigerians would want it. So how are you going to handle this, especially when it comes to um, these unions and, of course, funding? Government is not cash-strapped. Government does not want to invest in its people, and then they claim they are cash-strapped. By the way, don't go too far on the ballot paper. Our own is number three, AAC. <laughs> so no need to go to number 10. What I'm trying to say to you is that we are not investing in education, we will do so. We are hiring right on the back 200,000 teachers as soon as I sworn in, into office. We are going to invest in our children and we are putting aside and whichever way we'll get 1.3 trillion naira as a one-time investment to take children who are not in school now in school and make it a crime for parents not to send their children to school in this country. It is the law. With regards to ASU, don't forget, I'm the only person standing here apart from Donald Duke, who was a social secretary in one university, who is a student union leader, who knew how to speak the language of ASU, the language of activism. We will discuss in a room in what we call Aluta, Continua, Victoria, etc., and solve the problem right. of ASU. 
they will no longer be strike on our um, government. I'll ask you a yes or no question very quickly, still on education. Do you think, uh, uh, Engineer Yagbagi, that um, education, uh, free education is sustainable? Yes or no, please? No, it's not sustainable under this environment. Uh, Mr. Shawara, do you, it is, is it? It's completely sustainable. It is possible and it must be made available. Okay, uh, Mr. Falaru Dorotoye. Absolutely, and free education must be a right to everyone, and we will make sure within four years that it gets At to all university levels? Up, up to secondary school, and then by, by within the four years to, to uh, tertiary institutions. Yes, uh, free education is sustainable for primary and secondary, but at university level, our idea in ANRP is that every university student should have projects they do every year okay. and they get paid. And if you can pay the students like 50,000 every semester, that was supposed to be a yes then you or can no now question. make, you can now charge them some fees at tertiary level. Mr. Donald Duke. Yes, any brain untrained is a drain on this nation. Okay. Um, <laughs> Professor Mogalo. Yes. Free education, is it yes. Free sustainable? Free education is sustainable at primary and secondary school levels, and at the university level, the federal government should heavily subsidize education. Okay, thank you very much. Now, let me quickly uh, move on to uh, the next issue, still staying around the budgetary allocation, and we are going to make it a little wider now. Now, if you get into government, the first 100 days is always uh, a very important marker of how uh, the new government has done or is doing. Now, in the first 100 days, what will be the low-hanging fruits for you as soon as you become president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That, the first 100 days, what would be the most important areas that you want to tackle as quickly as possible, hitting the ground running? Uh, I am going to put an end to the idea of waiting for 100 days before government act in this country. That is what happened. I didn't hear that. I'm not going to be part of a 100 days ritual. Okay. The job of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria starts on the day the President is sworn in. It is that kind of mentality that made it impossible for the current Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, retired and tired President General Buhari, to spend six months before putting his cabinet together because he thought he had 100 days. I'm acting from day one on all of the programs and agenda and manifesto of our party, which is Paisa Heat, that Nigeria will be secure on day one. There will be action towards providing electricity from day one, infrastructure from day one, clamping down on corruption from day one, creating an economy that is inclusive from day one, restructuring this Nigeria in the interest of Nigerian people from day one, providing health from day one, education from day one, providing food security by investing in agriculture from day one, and also ensuring that we invest in technology from day one. It is called Spicer Heat. Nigeria is too dull and drab. We want to heat up and spice up this country. That is the agenda of our party. We don't have the luxury of 100 days. We don't have the luxury of 100 hours. We don't even have the luxury of an hour. As soon as you become the president of Nigeria, you should abandon and jettison the idea of waiting for 100 days so that we don't also spend our past and scarce resources in advertising in newspapers for the 100 days of the president, because it's one of the things that is destroying this country, that we wait until things get really, really bad before we act. Time to act is now, and the action president is coming your way come February 16, 2019. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, to Engineer Yabagi, please. Uh, the first 100 days, do you believe that it's a waste of uh, time? How long will it take for Nigerians to begin to see the impact of your government or governance as soon as you become president? We will certainly hit the ground running because we already have the plans for this country. Education, in what areas specifically? Education in particular is, uh, is our priority. That's why we have the book as Action Democratic Park symbol. We're going to give qualitative education free Free does not breed quality. That's why I'm saying free education is not sustainable. We must give qualitative, affordable education. We must also, we are going to pay 100,000 minimum wage as we come in. We are going to make sure that the issue of subsidy is put to rest. We are going to generate 5 million jobs. As soon as we come in, you will see programs that will make you generate those jobs. We are also going to make